Hello, welcome to my world of fragrance. I thought that today would be an exciting day where I talk you through my Galan beehives. Galan has recently changed their packaging, so now this beehive collection of classic fragrances has become the inverted heart uh, bottles, which I don't know, I just really enjoyed the beehive. Uh, the bee is the Galan family emblem, and there are 69 bees on these crystal bottles and I just found them so beautiful to collect. Although I do not call myself a collector, I do wear all of my perfumes. They don't simply just sit on the shelf for me. But yeah, let's talk about these as sort of a farewell to the beehive packaging and perhaps a new era for Galen. They are making changes in other areas as well, so we shall see. So the first fragrance that we have is from 1860 and I have these ranked in chronological order by the date of release. So this one was originally created for the Empress Eugenie who was Napoleon III's wife. It's the Eau de Cologne Imperiale and you do see the emblem of the arms over here on the front of it. It's an iconic fragrance for Guerlain. It was created by Pierre-François Pascal Guerlain and that was back in 1853 that this was a made-to-measure fragrance for the Empress Eugenie and then she later approved them to release this as one of their fragrances. So it really is a piece of history that you're wearing when you wear this perfume and I would describe this as a bougie take on the 4711 Neroli Dominant Cologne. This also has rosemary in the dry down so it has a little bit of an herbal quality to it as it dries down. But it's by no means a fragrance that will last you all day, and it's not meant to last you all day. This was created as sort of a pick-me-up for the morning, and then once the fragrance dissipates, you are encouraged to wear something else. And that's basically how I wear my fragrances during the day. I start off with something light, and then I move on to something that's a little bit more bold. Otherwise, I get bored of the scent. <laughs> that's just me. Uh, but a very beautiful, beautiful cologne if you are on the market for such a natural smelling, um, uplifting, wonderful cologne. There's a lot to be said about the cologne originally being created for women and now it's sort of been overtaken and used as something that mainly men wear, um, but just keep that in mind. Originally it was created for women so there's absolutely no problem with a woman wearing a cologne and I love this one. Sprayed on hair when I used to have long hair. The next fragrance that we have is the iconic Jiki from 1889 and this was the first modern perfume as we know perfumery today. It was originally created for women. It is an ambre fougère. So let's just remember again that the fougère category <laughs> has since been pretty much hijacked by men, but it was originally also for women. Jiki I find to be the next step after the Eau de Cologne Imperiale because it is slightly more weighty than that. It is not just a fleeting Neroli. It also has that amberiness to it. So it's more of a throughout the day type of perfume, I would say. And I have the Eau de Toilette of it. I would love to have all of these in the Extres because I really find that the Extres are richer, uh, really beautiful. Not all of them come in Extres though, but Jiki does and one day I may have the extra of that fragrance. Amé Guerlain created Jiki as a homage to a girl that he knew back in school. That was her name, Jiki. So it kind of has a romantic backstory to it as well, but it is a very complex fragrance. So what's interesting about Jiki is that when it was released, it's not like women just flocked to buy this fragrance, but you did find that a lot of men enjoyed wearing this fragrance, which could be a reason why the Fougère was then adopted by the men as sort of a masculine fragrance style. Um, but yeah, we must remember that the original fougères were created for women, so there is absolutely no problem with a woman wearing a fragrance like Jiki. I will say that you do feel that this is a lot more complex than say the Eau de Cologne Imperiale because it has um, that playfulness with the amber as well. You do feel that this has top notes, middle notes, and base notes, whereas this one, the Eau de Cologne, is more top notes and perhaps middle notes, but it does not have that, you know, everlasting feel and the different uh, stages of the perfume in the same way. So Jiki, a absolute icon and classic. 
The next fragrance that we have is from 1906 and it is called Après Londé, meaning after the downpour. So when the rain has disappeared and things are, you know, coming back to life. I find this fragrance to be a soft floral. It is mainly a violet fragrance for me, but it is just, it's so extremely delicate. This is not a fragrance that you go for if you're looking for a banger <laughs> or that style of fragrance. It is just, uh, it's like a soft kiss. I find it extremely romantic. Some people find this fragrance sad, but I personally do not find it sad at all. I find it like, a nice springtime fragrance. It would be a beautiful fragrance for um, an occasion like a, a religious occasion or something like that where you celebrate a person. I was going to say a wedding, but whatever type of thing that would uh, suit you where you are wearing delicate garments, I think that Après Londé would be beautiful for. This fragrance definitely inspired Leur Bleu, which is another icon that I don't have in the beehives, but I have in another flacon. And Leur Bleu is just a, a step more in that direction. This is a delicate version of that fragrance. Après Londé definitely inspired Ensolence as well, if you ask me, which is a perfume that I'm going to get to later. Because of that violet note, it's as if they went into the archives of the Galan classics and then found a way to continue that lineage. So Après Londé is stunner that inspired so many others afterwards. And yeah, a beautiful soft floral. Why? So the next fragrance that we have is one of my absolute favorite classic fragrances of all time. <laughs> it was one of the Galans that originally really blew me away. And this is just the eau de toilette of it, Vol de Nuit, which was released in 1933. Again, I wish I had the extrait of this one. I will absolutely be getting it one day. Vol de Nuit is inspired by the book of the same name by Antoine Saint-Exupéry. And basically, the key takeaway of this book is about courage, but it's about flying at nighttime. So this man works in the aviation industry. And so Vol de Nuit, the original packaging, was inspired by the propellers of a plane. It's just... Uh, a really eye-catching bottle, the classic one. And so Vol de Nuit is, I would say, it's a chipre fragrance. It does belong to that category, but it's very woody to me. It's a woody, slightly floral fragrance. It follows the oak moss character of a chipre, but it also has the classic aldehydes in it. It also has iris in it. And it is an extremely, extremely complex fragrance. The first time that I smelled Vol de Nuit, it was the uh, extrait version of it, and I was just completely, completely blown away. I had tried Chalimar, I had tried all of the other classics, none of them had moved me, but this was the one that moved me. And once you find the classic that does, it just opens your eyes to the whole world of fragrance appreciation. So Vol de Nuit, definitely try this one. And I treasure this one, like you can really see. I don't touch this bottle as much, but that's silly. I should. I should be wearing this pretty much every day because it's one of my favorite classics. So the next fragrance that we have is a jump from the 1930 classical Chiplas to the late 1970s. So this is a whole different style of fragrance, but as you can see, it is still part of one of the icons of Guerlain. These are the ones in the clear glasses, and then as we move more towards the modern ones, we have the frosted glass. So from 1979, we have Naima, which is to me, the rose. Like if you want rose and you want a passionate, deep scarlet red rose, you go for Naima by Galin. And I only recently got into the rose. I feel like as you age and as you go through different times of your life, you learn to appreciate different parts of fragrances. And I am now a rose craze. So I am crazy about Naima. I actually don't know what the name Naima means. So if any of you know, please share. And yes, this rose is at full bloom. It is just living its best life. And this fragrance is an entire homage to the rose. So if you like that, I mean, there's also some patchouli going on in here, but uh, I just see a beautiful blooming 
Rose. The next fragrance that we have is Samsara. This one is from 1989. And this was one of my mother's perfumes, or is one of my mother's perfumes. This reminds me of her. It is a, I will say, feminine sandalwood. This smells like a woman to me because of my association with this fragrance. So when I wear this fragrance, when I feel somebody else wearing it as well, I'm like, it smells like my mom in here. <laughs> so Samsara being an 80s perfume is of course very strong. It, uh, it pretty much fills a room if you overdo it. I have the EDP version. It has this this musk blend thing going on with it. Like it's hard to decipher the notes. I feel a lot of sandalwood in this, but there's also ylang, there's also other florals in here. And it, it's just like one of those power blends where when you feel the sillage of it, you can't really pick out what it is. It's just a lot. So this one is more for the bold and I love it as well because of my association to it. I'm not sure if I would have picked out this fragrance had I not had this, you know, sentimental feeling towards it, but because I do, I absolutely adore Samsara. So now we're moving out of the 80s and into the 90s, and in 1996, we have a fragrance released called Champs Elysees. This was originally created a lot sooner uh, by Guerlain, but then they created a new version of Champs Elysees, so the previous version has nothing to do with this version, but uh, this version is basically an ode to the famous street, one of the famous streets in the world, I guess, Champs-Élysées in Paris, where all the fancy shops are, where the cafes are. And I mean, it doesn't smell grand as such, but it smells very pleasant, as if you're walking in different settings, because it seems to have all of these uh, different florals in the fragrance. It kind of feels like you've walked into shop and shop and you know, moved around. It smells like those uh, chic people who are out shopping on the Champs-Élysées, if you ask me. To me, this fragrance makes me happy, okay? It's the Eau de Parfum that I have here. I use this as an after-shower fragrance because it just smells clean and floral. And again, it just makes me happy. If you like something that is slightly powdery floral, um, it's also described as fruity, but I get predominantly floral with this. I get a lot of mimosa in this fragrance. So a nice, happy yellow floral. Then check out Champs-Élysées by Kierna. And now lastly, we come to possibly <laughs> one of my favorites as well. I feel like I'm saying every one of these are my favorites, but that's why I have them, right? So Ensolence was released in the 2000s. And it does not smell like a 2000 perfume to me. Well, in some ways it does, but in other ways it doesn't. Like I said, I believe that uh, the team at Guerlain went back into the archives, went back and looked at Après Londé um, from earlier on and developed Ensolence. They decided to take the violet note and really amplify it and make it powdery and make it powerful as well. Because as time has gone by, people really want a fragrance that I feel like is a statement maker. The delicate fragrances aren't really the popular ones anymore. It's like people want to get noticed with their fragrance, which can be both good or bad. So Ensolence, you will definitely get noticed with. This is a very heavily violet dominant fragrance. It smells like um, violet turned into pill form, uh, Parma violets to be exact, the sweet. And I just love it. What are they called in the US? like those heart candies as well, the way that they crumble is the sensation of ensolence. And I just find this to be maybe the most beautiful combination with the purple juice and this uh, frosted beehive glass, just saying. But yeah, I really love ensolence. So thankfully, a lot of these are now in the new packaging, but they have not been changed. So you can still enjoy the same juice, but we will bid farewell to the beautiful beehive bottles, which I have really enjoyed having and I'm going to cherish. But once these fragrances are over with, I'm not gonna be like out trying to find them if they're not easily available or anything. I'll just go for the new packaging. I'm not that invested. Like if the juice itself is the same, then I'm not that bothered by the outer of it. 
And so I hope that you enjoyed this overview of my Galan Beehives. Let me know your thoughts. What are your favorite classic Galan fragrances? There are some here that you know I own in other formulations. So if you're wondering about some other Galan classics and why I have not included them here, then that would be the reason. I think that classic perfumery is often uh, forgotten. A lot of people enter into the world of fragrance by maybe trying luxury fragrances. Like if your, you know, entry point is only things like Serge Off or Parfum de Marie, then I really urge you to go back and try some classics. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please leave me your feedback and I will see you in my next one.